Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to episode 37 of Outspoken. Today I have a special guest, 37 episodes in, Samantha Lux. Hello. Hello, I'm finally here. What's yeah. up, what's up? So today we're going to be, in the beginning of the podcast, we have this beautiful PragerU video that we're going to react to today. And it's, what is it titled? It's about um, Muppet Babies pushes trans agenda on children, because that's accurate. So. <laughs> It's going to be really yeah. fun. And then in the second half of the episode, we're going to just be answering some questions. I had some people give us some questions. So thank you for um, doing this with me too, Samantha. I appreciate of it. Of course. So let me try to share this screen with you and we can go through this video. Live. Oh, we're live. Hi, everybody. It's Tuesday morning. Jill. Sam Sorry, is that too loud for you? No, no, no it's okay. good. Okay. In here with Prager, you kids. We hope we hope you're having a good day. We've got hot topics that we're all furiously and quickly talking about over here, right, Will? That's exactly right. Yes, and it all has to do with what Muppet Babies. Yes, my mustache. <laughs> we'll be debating that the entire show. <laughs> we're debating Muppet Babies first, and Will's mustache second. So we're good to go. Ah, uh uh, sorry. I'm <laughs> literally. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do it? My mustache. I actually did talk about the mustache though, because I do have things to say about it. <laughs> what is what's your thing to say about it? <laughs> I do have things to say. Yes, yes. Reminds me. It's giving me very much, um, Ricky from Trailer Park Boys. Have you ever seen Trailer Park Boys? Nope. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, no, I get it. maybe mind. I'll have to look up a picture. You I'll really to... should. It's literally. Actually, yeah. I'm gonna do it right it's... now. Okay, do it as quick as I possibly can. Okay, yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <What the fuck? laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. Um, and there are just definitely filler parts of this video that are trash. So probably take them out at one point. Uh, like I said, I'm from Prager You Kids. Guess what, guys? We're going to talk about it a little bit later in this live after we talk about Muppet Babies. But we at Prager You Kids are doing a huge membership drive. Wait, Prager You Kids is kind of weird. E Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, just gonna like go with it for a second. I was like, okay, you can just, you know, <laughs> pretend that's a normal thing, but it's fine. Mm -hmm. We love to indoctrinate children. It's fine. That's so because if anyone has ever you've seen a lot of prayer you, huh? Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Me too, unfortunately. <laughs> For kids, mm -hmm. that's kind of weird to sit your kids down in front of that and like watch prayer you. Right, especially like the content that they make is like don't be a whore like for four-year-olds okay yeah you're four but don't be a whore i can't it rhymes <laughs> right gotta start them early i guess yeah so <laughs> weird this month in august for our prep membership prep stands for prager you resources for educators and parents it is the membership group of parents teachers administrators principals uh grandparents homeschool parents anyone who wants to support our wholesome pro-america happy age appropriate kids shows and videos and i'm sorry i just <laughs> So what is this shameless promo for the, it was like the longest promotion. I ever. love how it's called prep also. <laughs> no connection to like the, the medication for gay men. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> resources to teach our kids American values. Uh, typically, we welcome about 1,000 members per month into our prep membership. This year for August, we're seeking to triple it. We want 3,000 of you to join prep to support our Prager You Kids show so we can keep making more to offset the types of shows that our children are now watching, such as Muppet Babies. Let's talk about Muppet Babies, right, Will? That's right. Well, let me say one thing. It's one thing to have you join prep, but I'm sure that you have friends, you have other people, your school administrators, whoever you know, you should be telling them to join as well. Because one of the greatest parts that's a lot like Prager Force, the same with prep, is that it's an online community. It's a digital community. This is literally an online cult, but it's fine. Like it's, it's... <laughs> for kids, though. It's for kids. It's fine. Cult, yeah, the cult for kids. It's so weird. <laughs> well, you get to meet with people and strategize and talk about things of people who have similar values to you. So tell all your friends and people who have kids or their teachers to join prep as well. A hundred percent. And you know, this is a fun fact. Twenty percent of our members are educators. Wow. Isn't that great? That's amazing. No, that's concerning. It is very concerning. Yeah. I think they should just cut this. So we should just cut this and make it into a prep commercial. I know like, what the fuck like, is like medication. 
the first <laughs> the first two minutes of the video have your kids join and uh and just have your kids join. Your to join prep get yeah. everybody on prep please it is so encouraging to know that 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 many teachers and parents from uh, uh, teachers across the country really do want to celebrate America. So, yes, exactly everything that Will said. It's an online community. Check out our shows. Guarantee you'll like what you see. But OK, so let's talk about Muppet Babies. Should we watch the clip first? I know many of you have probably already seen this online. Our royal Muppet Babies is forwarding a trans. What was that? Did the, <laughs> the guy fuck that shit? Director did not know when to start. He's like, now? Okay, got it. Now. I thought that I was like, I thought it was lagging. I was like, oh, that, what did I just do? Agenda into their shows. Are we listening? I'll yes. listen. Okay, go for it. Oh, we met the most amazing princess, but they ran away, and all they left behind was this. Everyone, there's something I need to tell you. The princess who came to your ball tonight was me. I'm Gonzarella. But Gonzo, why didn't Vu tell us? Because you all expected me to look a certain way. I don't want you to be upset with me, but I'm the royal ball. Okay, so there we are. Okay. Um, just for anybody who can't see this, it was like a Muppet. Was that a boy Muppet? I think so. Yeah. I think, yeah. It's I think hard it's to tell, but I mean. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be a boy Muppet. And then he like, and he's wearing a dress. And he's like, I didn't want to tell you because I didn't know what you were going to say. And it's it's literally just a, it's, I don't even know what he's supposed to be. Like, is like a. Literally, it's like, oh, an boy, okay, I mean, if you say so, sure, but whatever. <laughs> and also they don't like say transgender. Like all these people are like, it's the transgender. Gonzo's just trying to wear a dress. Exactly. Just trying to look cute. Why can't Gonzo wear a dress? Gonzarella, right. right? That's what they said. I think it was Gonzarella. Gonzarella, yeah. That's the best name ever, also. <laughs> Miss Gonzarella. It's a new Cinderella. <laughs> and the little glass slipper. Did you see it? So cute. What, the glasses? No, oh, they the had a little glass slipper because it yeah. was like actual like Cinderella, yeah. Yeah, it was cute. I liked it. So I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Me neither. Yeah. I haven't seen like the full context. Is that literally like do you know if that's the only part of the Muppets that like mentions that? Honestly, it probably is. And they don't even say yeah, they don't even like say <laughs> LGBT. Muppet Babies is on Disney Junior. Uh, the target age is roughly age three. I mean, my kids would have watched it when they were like three years old, four years old, five, all the way up to six years old. This is preschool before kindergarten. Will, I know you don't have children, but let me ask you, do you think that this is age appropriate? No. No, this is something about sexualizing children is sick and perverted. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Literally. Like, okay. Dresses nope. are inappropriate. Dresses are a sin. Dresses are sex. Dre sex. <laughs> they <laughs> what? <clears throat> Wait. A Muppet wearing a dress is sexualization. Right. I'm like, I think that you're thinking a little too heavy into this. Maybe you should stop sexualizing Miss Gonzarella here. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't maybe. even like revealing dress or anything. She's just full ball gown. Like it was. Yeah. It was a big, beautiful dress. Is it mm -hmm. genuinely? I just don't understand how that's sexualizing anybody or anything at all. It's a cartoon right. character in a dress that that's mm -hmm. a, that's existed for years. I mean, these are the same people that like yell at women and whoever when they dress. Um, you could say like immodestly or whatever, when they show skin or whatever, they say that they're whores and stuff like that too. So, I mean, it doesn't, you know, it is on theme for them, but that's, that's dumb true. nonetheless. Yeah. If you show any amount of skin at all, you know what that means? She was slut. Yeah. <laughs> Am I allowed to say slut also? I don't know. Yes. You're allowed to say fucking whore. Okay, good. Perfect. Slut. Yeah. Okay. No, it's okay. not age appropriate whatsoever. It's not age appropriate. And I say that as a parent and I wanted to ask, you know, Will, who is much more, much cooler and much more hip than me. And in, you know, it <laughs> don't flatter me. You are just as cool as me, Jill. If not cool. Will see. You see his mustache, yeah, ma'am. I'm sorry. It's uh, <laughs> honestly, I feel like I was flirting for a second. I'm like, <laughs> He's like, you're a little bit younger, a little bit cooler than me. I just want to know you. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I am actually. <laughs> He's like, yeah, you're pretty old, bitch. <laughs> you may not understand, but... <laughs>
age appropriate and this is exactly many of you know who are living it in all corners of the country this is what is happening on our television shows in our movies for our kids in our schools many of us those of you who are members and even not members of prep you send me messages saying the librarian read my child a book today about gender nonconformity. i haven't talked to my child about that yet what do i do these are things that are happening across the country with this gender identity non-binary ideology pushed onto kids it's confusing it's not age appropriate and it really strips our rights as parents it completely strips our rights as parents away because as parents, we're the ones who are raising our kids. We are the ones who decide when we want to open these types of conversations with our kids. And she's, she's all upset. She's like, it strips our rights as parents. They're talking to our children before we get a chance to talk to them. It's like, you, you can talk to your kids. Like nobody's stopping you from talking to your kids. And you know that they would only say this about like gender identity or like sexuality or anything like that. Um, like imagine them saying this about like math. They're like, I haven't talked to my kids about division yet. I don't want them learning about long division. <laughs> it's it's, like, you can look at the syllabus. That shit is so weird. When you go to school, when you're a kid and you go to school, you learn things. Like right. when, when I was <laughs> in fifth grade, we learned about like anatomy of of the sexes. Cause it's mm -hmm. school. Cause they taught us. Like, what are you? It's time to learn. Time to get going. She's like, no. They can only know what red is. Like, okay. Yeah, you're when your kid goes out in public and in, in the real world, that <laughs> then they're gonna know that like different types of people exist. You can only shelter them for so long. When when you talk about stuff like this, like you don't have to agree. You don't have to agree with what schools are telling them. You can give them your opposite opinion, but don't just like shut down all conversation completely. I feel like that's where you know, issues arise. They're just going to learn it from somebody else. Exactly. It completely strips our rights as parents away because as parents, we're the ones who are raising our kids. We are the ones who decide when we want to open these types of conversations with our kids. And age four and five is not appropriate. When a kid's in kindergarten, they it's, it's black, it's white, it's red, it's green. They want to color, they want to paint, they want to make friends. They don't want to have to think about complicated issues that are medically damaging to kids on a psychological and physical level like <laughs> on, i'm sorry I'm sorry, medically damaging kids oh God, did you see that fly can you fuck off no i didn't see no i fully saw it in my webcam like... i don't know like kids aren't thinking about it that deep like yeah they want to color they want to do stuff and if they're like Oh, that's a trans person that's cool let's go play baseball like they don't care they don't care what's her name right Susan? I don't know what her name is. Jill. This woman, Jill. 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 Okay. Right. First of all, who are you? Second of all, I don't know. Second of all, please iron the fucking backdrop behind you if you're if anyone's <laughs> watching. I even notice that. They just threw that like, shit up. <laughs> yeah, they did. We're like, day one, get it up. Uh, also, they talk about later in the video, she's talking about how these topics are too complex for young kids. But then they talk about later in the video, I'm sure we're going to see it, but they promote their Prager U kids or whatever. And they show a part of their episode. And it's all about like Paul Revere and this very complicated subject. I mean, not that Paul Revere is complicated, but the situation they show is very like, it's not just red and blue. So like, make up your mind, which way do you want it? Like simple or not simple. That's true. Cause I'm sure their Prager U for kids videos are like filled with stuff that kids would not understand at all. Like talking about right. the economy or something or like presidents <laughs> and like policies. Right, like abortion and stuff. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? But we're sexualizing kids. Got it. Yep. We're, no, we're indoctrinating kids too. <sighs> what do we do? Ban all of these programs? I would be a... <laughs> I would say yes, but I know some people watching would definitely disagree with me. I don't know. I mean, this is horrible. I don't think that kids should be allowed to watch this. If we're not going to ban it, which I don't see that happening anytime soon, then kid or parents need to ban their kids from watching this. You yeah. If you're a parent, don't let your kids watch this. That's I the first step. Boycott these companies that put out information that is harming children. They make it so normal. They make it so that something like this is incredibly normal. So the next generation that comes up, all of this is just completely normal. I don't know how long these people think they can shelter their kids from anybody at all. 
Right. They're like, they're, uh, they're showing kids all this stuff and they're indoctrinating them. Like, no, we're just, you know, teaching them about people that exist that, you know, very much are here to stay. Yeah. Like, you can't if, pretend we're not here. Like, it's just because kids want to, they want to do certain things. Like, I remember when I was a kid, I did, I hated Barbies. I wanted the boy toys. And like, I knew that it was like different and weird and stuff and I probably shouldn't do it um, just because like that's what society tells you. And if I was a kid and I saw something like that on TV, I'd feel so much more comfortable doing it. It's right because it's not like it's going to affect those young kids that do want to play with, you know, like the traditionally boy toys or traditionally like the girl toys. It's just going to help those young, you know, kids that are a little bit different that want to play with something different, feel comfortable with themselves. It's not like it's transing everybody. It's just helping people feel more secure in themselves exactly exactly like me seeing the girl characters on the tv shows wearing the dresses didn't want to make me wear a dress as a young girl so mm -hmm. it's not i really just don't think it would do the opposite at all like they're not yeah gonna... no it definitely wouldn't but i mean when you don't have any sound arguments you got to start making stuff up i guess <laughs> yeah that's what their their only argument ever is about children yeah. So, you know, I, I know. And that's uh, I agree because I've gotten to the point now with my girls and they are older and I have had to have certain conversations with them before I really would have because I know that all of this stuff is out there. And I also know that <clears throat> if I'm not <laughs> getting ahead of it and if I'm not on the offense, uh, I'm not doing my due diligence as a parent and right. and that's our job to do as parents i also want to alert everyone if you don't know um i mean we are based in california and in california schools right now in elementary schools administrators and uh i will say outside programs are coming in and offering uh workshops to very young children really propelling these non-binary discussions with children who may or may not have learned about it already and they're giving our kids information they're giving our kids helplines that they can text <laughs> I'm sorry. do you inform my child sorry Don't, what? <laughs> for, why is she so obsessed with non-binary first of all right right like where did where was non-binary even like <laughs> talked about in the whole entire Exactly. Like they're just making things up. They're like, Gonzarella is non-binary. They use they them pronouns. <laughs> this is a disgrace. And they're giving your children helplines. So when your children feels like shit, when your child feels like shit because of me, they're going to be able to call somebody about it. And I think that's right. wrong. Right. How dare they not want to, I won't say it, but you know. <laughs> like what's wrong with that? Genuinely, what's wrong with the helpline? No, I, I, yeah, I don't know. They're like, you can't make my kid feel happy. They yeah. need to hate themselves. <laughs> they can't, they're not allowed to talk about the problems. Without a parent's consent about if you question whether you're a male or a female, or if you think you're in between, text this number and one of our helpers will counsel you through it. And they're not telling, telling us. Sorry, is that like, is that what the helpline is for? Like she didn't elaborate. Yeah. I know, but like, first of all, what's the number? I need to give it up. Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, give me, give me that number. <laughs> right, I know, share that real quick, put it at the bottom of the screen or something. But uh, for real though, it's like a suicide prevention hotline. Like, uh, okay, you're kind of exposing yourself right now parents that they're doing this us parents have no idea this is happening they do they, these counselors will talk to our kids these strangers who we don't know who they are without our consent and they're pushing this uh notion to our children that if I, your parents don't what i feel like that really just is not happening i they're like it's <laughs> doing it without our consent behind our backs like is that happening or are you just not paying attention did you not read like the syllabus like i'm sure that you're being informed <laughs> I'm very sure of it. Exactly. Dang. Exactly. They're doing this behind our backs. What are you talking <laughs> right? about? Like, no, you just didn't read the paper, sis. You just don't pay attention. Believe in this, then your parents are bad people. And here are the steps that you can take to, to find your true self and to become your non-binary self. And it's very confusing and it's damaging because it does involve, when you get to a certain point, Hormone therapy. Here we go.
though. Here, she's so obsessed with non-binary people. This is like, what are you? <laughs> what? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. And also, like, how does Miss Gonzarella? Is she really promoting hormones and like? I know. I mean, I guess I, she's talking about the helplines and stuff, but even those, like, I'm sure they're not like teaching kids how to go out and get black market drugs. Like, they're I. Whenever you talk about like a helpline, I just think of like a helpline. Like they're not going to say this is actually how you transition. So you, you're going to go here. You're mm -hmm. going to get your hormones at 10 years old, at uh, eight years old, at five years old. These people think that five year olds have uh, SRS. So, I mean, yeah, right. They're they would believe it. Whatever. I don't even know if they actually believe it, though, or if they just know that their audience would be so upset by that. You know, they're just like grifters. Yeah. Um, so they yeah. is even worse. Yeah, yeah, and they drill it into their heads, so then that's why they think this way, and it's it's sad. It's very sad. Yeah. Will affect kids for the rest of their life. It is physically damaging. In some areas, kids do not need, a, you know, a, a parent's consent to undergo medical treatment that will alter them for the rest of their lives, and they can opt to take it w without even having the, uh, the reasoning ability and the wherewithal to know if what they're doing is, uh, to know what they're doing. And it's, at least it's really sad. Our parents' rights are being stripped away, and we need to take them back immediately. I'm curious. I just don't know if that's true. Yeah, also, yeah, I don't know if that's right. true. But even if it was true, like we allow minors to make these medical decisions without parental consent all the time when it's proven that it's medically necessary. So like you can get birth control and like not have your parents informed even when you're under 18. So like if a doctor and like all these therapists and stuff are deciding that it's medically necessary for you, like, I feel like that's okay, no? No, that's right though, that's, yeah. Something, I forget a lot of things. I forget things a lot. So thank you for bringing that point to the table. There's any comments about this Muppet Babies? <clears throat> There's a lot of comments. Okay. Um, Patty says it's time for this grandmother to take Disney off and stop buying their products. No more. Yeah. Good. Just Good. buy old Patty. VHS of The and Lion then, King. <laughs> yeah. And you'll be and totally then, fine. And I want to tell that grandmother, I, I, I am with you. No one was a bigger Disney fan than me, but because, and Muppet Babies is on Disney Junior, like we said, but it, it, it's to the point now where we have to provide alternative shows and entertainment and programming to our kids. And what, oh my God, Will. Because that's on you. Like you just. I'm like, afraid, like. Honestly. Fully, you don't have to watch it if you don't want. Like I'm sure Disney will be just fine. <laughs> they'll be fine. <laughs> they'll definitely be fine. And th like. The thing about it is the kid's not even going to notice, like, in all honesty, they're probably just gonna be like, oh, that's cool. What's the rest of the show have? Right. Like that 10 second clip is not going to stick in their brain as much as these people are focusing on it. Yeah. So like, it's not going to turn your kid trans. I'm sorry, but it's just, it's right. Like, I wish it would. I wish we could get to your kids and make them all trans. <laughs> yes. That's our plan. I You're not to... supposed to tell them. You're not supposed to tell them. All right, sorry. Never mind. We love straight cis people. Yeah, we don't want anybody else to be trans. Mm -mm. That's not our. <laughs> yeah, you can't join the club. Sorry. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, we're exclusive. VIP only. Mm -hmm. yes. What if people started watching Prager U Kids shows instead of Disney and Netflix? Hey, Haley. Just... No, no, no. <laughs> She's so excited. She's like, <laughs> see how I put that in there. She's like, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> no. <laughs> You see what you did, sister? We're not about it. Haley Watts would be just said Prager changed. U needs TV shows. We're doing it, Haley! <laughs> Come on, Haley. We're, so we're working. But here's the thing, Haley. I love Haley. I love, I love how they're so mad about how these uh, channels are all, like, attacking the children and going for the children when they're very explicitly like, let's make a whole channel for children. Let's, let's make a whole series, a whole TV channel. Like, That's okay. True. That's true. <laughs> like, I mean, if it's not a problem for you to do it, then why can't Disney do it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, they, yeah. Right, they, like you want to promote your right wing messaging? Like, okay, well, have fun. We're not watching it. You and it's on YouTube, so sorry, but the five year olds probably can't get to it anyways. So. <laughs> right, it's like H box. They're <laughs> it's, they're stuck with Muppet Babies in the in the Muppet in the dress for five seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> they'll suffer. It's fine. They'll get over it. <laughs> what Prager U Kids is trying to do. We're starting with digital programming. We are starting with videos, with 
animation, uh, crafts that teach American history. We're starting with digital. That sounds boring as fuck. Sorry, I had to pause it. You're like, uh, I could not be less interested. Crafts. The way she's like so adamantly like, <laughs> <laughs> like oh, well, I, uh, the last thing I would want to do on this earth is do crafts about American history. <laughs> what the fuck? Right. Oh my god. <laughs> And like, if you've seen any of Prager use like animations, like their videos already, they're not, it's not the most pleasant to look at. I feel like a kid would get a full nightmare from that. Yeah. It's a very boring animation. It, like as an yeah. adult, I can't even, I can't even get through it. That teach about the historical heroes that our schools refuse to teach about. Now we're starting with all this stuff on a digital level, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. My background is in television. So. It might not happen this year, but this is a personal goal and a goal that all of us at PragerU Kids are working towards. We want our shows on television. Uh, that is the, I, honestly, I, do you think that it's would happen? Us. She is. She's huh? like, I, I have a background in TV. Do you think it, do you think it would happen? Um, no, no, not unless they like fully bought their own TV like network. <laughs> Which they yeah. might. I mean, they they do be doing some intense things, but I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't think I don't think it would ever get through. I think it's too. It's like it, it's. I'd be um, interested to see it. I won't lie. I would want to. I want to know what they're trying to sell my child. So <laughs> weird. We want every single American family and teacher to watch our shows in the classrooms at home. We want this PragerU Kids program to grow, but we can't do it without any of you and that's that's why it brings me back to the membership that's why we're doing this membership drive have you heard of those like so teachers joined. that literally show like bigger you videos in their classes no are you serious yeah no i haven't like obviously had a teacher like that but i've seen people i don't know where i saw it maybe it was in like comments on something on youtube but they like their professors will literally show them like prager you youtube videos as like a reliable source Wow. Oh my God. Wow. If that was, if that, nah, if I was in school and I saw that shit, I would have walked out. I'm so happy we didn't have it. <laughs> right. Like you walk in and like it's on the board, like Prager you. Oh my God. And they Prager give, people the gamble. they, yeah, they literally give false statistics and false, uh, false everything. Like I've literally Absolutely. looked at a lot of their videos and researched and then they're like lying about what they said. So it's, it's like uh, a quick Google like doesn't agree with you. Yeah. And people but don't that's take the thing, the like their viewers just fully wouldn't even care. They just believe it. They you know wouldn't. I mean? like, their news from like Facebook, like they fully don't care. They really, they don't. You could literally show them like a, a sheet of statistics and they would say that it's wrong or like, um, well, there's another statistic that says otherwise. And then you ask them for it. <laughs> then they don't, they never give it to you. Right. Or they do. And it's like a study that's been like completely disproven, like 45 times with yeah. like sources and like everything. Yeah. It's the same recycled garbage over and over yeah. again. Love uh, the growls. We love to growl over here. Yes. <laughs> Sandy says uh, a small child does not need to be thinking about sexualization. Exactly. Right? There is a reason why they are doing all of this. These people who create these programs. The kids aren't thinking about that over a dress and a fucking Muppet. A Muppet in a dress. Right, right. right. You're the one making it sexual. They are. Their own lives, so they try to push it onto children. They feel insecure about their own ideas and horrible things that they have, that they feel like someone else has to agree with them, so they push it onto children because no one who has actually any sort of common sense will actually agree with these kind of things or think that they're real. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. You got something to say, because, like, I mean, like, I, they're like, first of all, I don't know how we're pushing anything on anybody. We're fully just, like, guns are can wear a dress. Like, that's fine with me. I don't know. And they're fully, like, we're going to make a whole network for kids, but we're not pushing anything <laughs> for kids. Yeah, it's the same. It's, like, shameless. It's so weird. And like, what did he just say? Hold on. Okay, and then he talks about, like, common sense, and I've made a video on this guy before and he actually thinks like children get srs so common sense <laughs> like if you want to talk about common sense, familiar with. <laughs> so i don't know what the this is i i think i call him brad or chad i forget which one it is but he he looks like a brad or a chad yeah sure. yeah yeah 
it's just like such an irresponsible thing to like say that like five-year-olds or six-year-olds are having these major, major surgeries. Like it's just not, it's not happening anywhere. Like, how can you just say that and just know you're wrong? And I, yeah, I think they know it too. And then when they spew it to like other people and then the people that are not educated, they're like, oh, well, that's bad. Like, okay, well, right. it's not Which, happening. Like, I agree. If any six-year-old's having a bottom surgery, that'd be probably yeah. a little problematic at least, but yeah, exactly. it's not happening. Yeah, it's all lies. It's for sure. lies. It does not <laughs> walk hand in hand with science. It does not walk hand in hand with truth or logic or reason. And <laughs> I just wanted to laugh at that. <laughs> it okay, like, sweetie, <laughs> the, the science is not agree with you. <laughs> they love to bring up that word science, and then that's right, just... they're like, it's second grade biology. I'm like, okay, well, I'm on like twelfth grade <laughs> biology. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Exactly. We're past basic biology, Jill. Too smart for them, I guess. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are living in an age of lies, and there's already been a generation of students who have been educated through lies. And right. if you don't lose a country like that, I don't know how you lose a country. It's like when you know that you have the truth, you don't have to go around like proving <laughs> to everyone that you have the truth because it's evident, mm -hmm. right? But when your when your entire argument or the things that you structure your society on are built on lies, then you have to mandate the lies because otherwise people are going to seek out the truth on their own. This is why they're so hard on pushing it because they know that it's lies and they have to just shove it down our throats to brainwash us with it. If it was the truth, it'd be self-evident, but obviously not. This isn't common sense. It's disgusting and perverted. And all you guys who know the truth need to push out the truth out there. I don't know. So mad. He, he really got into that one. He really was like on a roll with that one. So. <laughs> right, like uh, <laughs> hit all the keywords, all the buzzwords. <laughs> Fucking, I don't even know what the fuck that means. Like, what do you do? What is he talking about? The truth. Like, right. And they're like, well, schools are teaching our kids all this BS. But like, I feel like our generation is very like, you could say like woke on these kind of things. But my school never taught me anything about like gender identity or like being non-binary or anything. We just don't hate other people for no reason, you know? Exactly. And yeah, yeah, same. <laughs> I, it would be interesting to uh, see it taught in schools now, though. It would, it would be nice. But I mean, be, like, it's yeah. just, it's silly to say that that's the reason that, like, people are becoming more accepting is because schools are pushing it. Like, it's just, no, we just are nicer now. I don't know. Yeah, we just really just don't care. Like, right. people, people don't care if you're trans or bisexual or gay. Like, they have other shit to worry about than your mm. life. Like, You want to do one of our kids' shows, Will? Yes, I would I think would we should to. have Children's Hour with Will Witt. I would love to. I, <laughs> Let's do he's it. He's got to shave that mustache first. <laughs> yeah, we might need to do that. Okay. Uh, show up do in my we white have van. A Children's Hour with Will. <laughs> no, thank you. At least you know that he needs to get rid of the mustache, though. At least they're aware. <laughs> yeah. I might scare the kids. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's pretty intimidating. There's a whole minute left of this. I don't want to watch it. I know. I think they just promote their, their thing for the rest of it. But let me hear. Sir, join us. Become thankful for all of you. If there's one. All right. Yeah, she just says thanks. So that was uh, I don't know. It's just it's it gave us a good chuckle, if nothing else. Yeah, I mean, I was I guess I watch it in like my free time. Sure. <laughs> right my favorite show my favorite channel it's so so weird but um, right like how can you be this upset about people literally just trying to make the world a better place for like young lgbt people like they're so mad they're like you can't make young lgbt people like themselves because then they're going to be like out and proud and that's not it's not good for no, them but. they're so mad because it's sexualizing their children just remember that right so that was a roller coaster. I'm really happy that you went on the roller coaster with me. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we were trapped in tight or else, you know, I don't think I would have made it, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, me neither. All right. So for, for the first question, someone asked your most ridiculous transphobe encounters, which, I mean, you, you can go first if you have any. I mean, I feel like, like, thankfully, I don't have any in-person transphobe encounters. I feel like that's always way worse when you're just out in public and something happens but I mean I've definitely had my fair share of transphobe encounters online you know like that one that made that video and that turf lady whatever we want to talk about we want to talk about her but 
That was the, um, I was so mad when I watched that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was so I just mad. laughed. It was so funny. <laughs> so stupid. Love her. Yeah, I oh, mean, like people her. like yeah. her. Shout out to her getting her channel banned. <laughs> Did she um, actually? <laughs> yeah, that channel's fully gone. Nice, nice. That's yeah, fine. But yeah, then just like other turf people online. But I don't know. I thankfully none in person. I mean, there there were like the few like college moments or whatever, like at a party where somebody would say he, and then like me being me I didn't hear it because I don't pay attention to like stupid boys you know but like my friends would hear it and they would freak out and then we would get in a battle or whatever and I'd be like what's going on what are you talking about yeah none that like you know I cried over or anything like that because transphobes are dumb we don't cry over transphobes yeah thank you that's what <laughs> that's what we're all about here most of the time except right. sometimes I get a little mad but I just pretend that I'm not so Right. We're like, this is a sad tear, but it's a happy tear. So we're just going to pretend. <laughs> exactly. Have you had any like in-person transphobic encounters? So, okay. Kind of. So it was, it was this one time I feel, I think I talked about it before very vaguely, but um, mm -hmm. this guy knew I was trans <clears throat> and he, me and Sheila were downtown and he was a relative of Sheila's like a, a more distant relative and he saw me he was like he was asking Sheila he was like what are you doing like late downtown it was like 9 p.m and we were going for out to eat like, like it was the city chilling? Saturday yeah so <laughs> right, and, living and life. what do you what are you doing out you know and he, he was from like the UK so it was really weird it was like a very specific area at a specific time so um I'm kind of in like this corner and he's just kind of, he looks intimidating. He doesn't want to talk to me, doesn't want to shake my hand. And I basically was like, it's nice to meet you. Cause I didn't know, I was like, it's nice to meet you. Cause you're you. a polite person, right? Like, yeah. And I put my hand out and he looked at me like just up and down. And then he didn't, he didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get my ass beat. <laughs> I'm going to, right, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get punched directly in the face, but he didn't do that. Uh, he, he ended up leaving. So that was good, but That's it was good. like, yeah, it was super weird though to see that in person. Like, even though he didn't say anything, um, just the fact that someone can be like, like look you up and down and think that you're so gross because you're you're trans. Right, like you don't know anything about me. Like, calm down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Especially so, somebody that is, you know, in a distant family member or whatever. It's like, yeah, it hurts that much more. You know, it's like, why? For what reason? Yeah. You're distant for a reason, man. Like, why? Are you... <laughs> right. Like, stay in the UK. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> why are you here? What do you mean? Why are we here? Why are you here? This is weird. Right. Literally, this is my country. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, I don't know if you were in Canada at that point. Then it's not like it's kind of your country now, right? You've, you've technically, yes. It. Actually, they're both my country, and I'm going to be the 47th president. So, get right. Ready. You're like, I get both of these, and you can stay in the UK. <laughs> get back to your little island, transphobe. <laughs> Yeah, and then I sent them off, and he was gone. Right, as you said. So the next question I have here is the difference in experiences of trans men and trans women. If you would like to, start. yeah, you can start. I mean, I feel like that's a very, like, broad question. Like, what are we talking here? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, uh, transitions, surgeries, dating. You know, I think I like there's lots of differences. There is, even though we're both trans, it's different because because it's fucking different. I I said. Um, like a lot of people assume that female to male transition is based off of misogyny, which I find very interesting. Um, cause I dis obviously I disagree with that statement. I would help. Yeah. I <laughs> no, actually I, like, fully I hate agree. women. <laughs> so now I became a man and then I don't, I mean, I don't really have that many uh, trans women can take, can you take pills for hormones instead? Uh, trans men can't. Yeah, no, I always thought that was super interesting. They, you can take um, estradiol tablets. I don't take them. I've heard that they're not as effective, but it is definitely an option, which is cool. Really? Yeah. I That's took them for a while, but um, yeah, no, I switched a while back. But it's interesting you say that a lot of transphobes think that trans men transition because they're misogynistic, because I hear a lot of times that trans women transition, especially trans women that are attracted to women, that they transition because it's like a fetish and they're like, get turned on by looking like a woman, a, wo oh. a woman, <laughs> get turned <laughs> on by looking like multiple women. <laughs> no, but it's like for real, like, you know, that Deborah So person or whatever, the one that was on, um, whatever, 
whatever she, wherever she was. But that's like something she like talks about a lot is that trans women that are attracted to women transition because it's like a fetish. I'm like, oh my God. I mean, maybe like the 0.01%, but I don't know who would go through all of that to like get turned on. <laughs> There's other ways. Yeah, there's many other ways. Why would you go through so much surgeries and hormones and and coming out like, okay, really? Right. right. Like they have those silicone masks, like a little, like, you know, drag queens wear like the silicone boobs. Like they could just do that if they just, yeah. you know, want to look like a woman. Yeah. Just do drag. Would you say that like dating would be different as a trans man? I mean, it's hard to like say what would be different because we haven't lived have just like the opposite, you know, but how is like dating as a trans man? <laughs> Obviously, you are happily engaged. Now. Are you, you haven't gotten married yet. You don't have to keep this in, but like, you haven't gotten married, have you? No, I'm trying to. Uh, I'm trying to be the I'm trying to break a world record of longest people engaged. Um, oh yeah, I remember that. You wanted to be um, <laughs> Pam and Roy's engagement, right, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think we already did, but we should be. Um, on a side note, yeah, we should be getting married like next year because of. Ooh, cause... congratulations! That's so fun. Thank you. I'm excited. I'm just trying to think for dating. I think it, I think it still would definitely be difficult. Um, especially with people when they talk about kids and stuff like that. I think that's important to a lot of people. And then I feel like that is a big deal breaker. That's something I can think of. What about you? Like for, for you dating, how's your experience? <clears throat> I mean, it's interesting because I feel like that's an argument that people bring up a lot. It's like, well, what if they want like biological kids, whatever, whatever. But I never hear that when I'm dating. It's never like an issue to me, you know? Guys aren't like, oh, I don't want to date you because I, I want biological kids. That's never like a priority that they bring up. It's either like, I support trans people or I think you're a dude, so I'm not going to date you. You know what I mean? Um, it's very much polar opposites. But I don't know. I feel like for me dating, because I do date, you know, straight men, it's I have to deal with all of the quote unquote toxic masculinity and all that kind of stuff on top of being trans. So I don't know, it's just like that added element, but I don't know, I had to think about it in a positive way. I try to like flip it around, you know, to say that like, if they don't accept me for being trans, then it's just like a nice little filter. You know, we probably won't agree on most other things um, politically or in whatever sense it may be. We just wouldn't get along in the long run. So yeah, it's kind of a blessing and a curse, you could say. Yeah, that's actually very true. Because if they're like, yeah, fuck trans people, you're like, okay, well, clearly you don't think the same way I do about a lot of things. Because right, tell by right. that little question, honestly. Right. Especially like how they react. Like if they oh, yeah. like are rude or whatever, or they just like block you, it's like, okay, well, you obviously don't respect people in general, um, trans or not. So it's, it's like, okay, bye. I'm good. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that's probably common for trans men too, though. You know what I mean? Like, if somebody doesn't like you for who you are, then it doesn't really matter because you are who you are. You are who you are. Yeah. That's not the catch line, is it? We are who we are. Is that the catch line? We, uh, yeah, we are who we are. Oh, that was that sounded so good. <laughs> no, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. That the song TikTok? Isn't that the, her song TikTok? TikTok. No, that's We Are Who We Are. Oh, that's the name of the song. <laughs> that's that the name so... of the song. All right, yeah. fuck. Fake ass Kesha fan. Are you actually? No, you are. I'm not the fake Kesha fan. Oh, I thought you said big, big Kesha fan. Oh, I mean, yeah, kind of. I mean, just, just a little bit. I'm like, I'm not like obsessed. I don't have like a shrine, but. Uh, I saw your shrine. <laughs> you're like, mm, you actually I don't, do. <laughs> I don't know why I'm you're like, lying. I'm like, turn this a little bit this way, get it out of frame. <laughs> How do you deal with hate online? I read it and then I just kind of like continue along. I don't know. I try to think about it as why would somebody make a comment like that? And it's not, you have to remember, it's not anything to do with me personally or like you personally. It's just, I don't know. People just don't like trans people. They hear the word trans and they just have a huge list of like preconceived notions that they just feel like they want to put on you. And I don't know. It's just super frustrating. The only thing that is super frustrating is when I go on videos or like I look at the comments on my videos and it's transphobes commenting things that I clearly addressed in the video and they just, you know, they just click on the video to just spew their transphobic whatevers. I, I hate that. I hate when you say something in a video and then someone, and then they talk about the thing that you already like debunked in your point. Yeah. Um, right. Like just go to like one minute in. 
I swear I talk about it. Like, please, just please. They play like five seconds and they're like, well, you're fucking trans, so fuck you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right, literally. I'm like, you want a timestamp? I got you. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually laugh at it as well. I, I just, I mean, there, there's no point because when somebody leaves a hate comment, I feel like that's just, it says a lot more about them than it does about you, especially if it's because of you're trans or you're gay or something like that. Um, right. I always see, <clears throat> in my opinion, and somebody's judging another person, it's just they're projecting uh, one of their insecurities. So, you know, they leave a hate comment, makes them feel a little bit better. Um, right. So that's always how yeah. I look at it. I mean, that's kind of like how you have to think about it, you know, just, it's not about you, it's about them. Exactly. What made you become a YouTuber? I don't know. I always like watched YouTube videos growing up. I was always very much into just like the YouTube scene. And I knew that I wanted to make videos, whether it be about, you know, like beauty or gaming or whatever it had to be, like I was going to do it. Um, so, and when I transitioned, I looked back and I remembered all the people that I watched before I transitioned, like Gigi Gorgeous, other trans YouTubers, whatever. And I was like, well, I could, I could like, you know, do my part, I could give back a little bit. That'd be kind of nice of me. So I did that. And then like after I transitioned or whatever, I, I, noticed all the Ben Shapiro's and that kind of stuff and I also saw content like yours and I was like well he's filling a giant hole that there is on you know leftist media with trans people but also it's a very good counterweight to those you know like right-wing people like Ben Shapiro so it was just like my way of like creating the media that you know like I wish I had growing up yeah that's that's a yeah. really great answer I I agree with that I started um I started because I loved YouTubers too, and I wanted to, uh, so I started videos before I even came out. So I just wanted to make like people happy, make people laugh, all that really cool stuff. Because the YouTubers I used to watch when I was 12, which is like 13 years ago, that's a, that's a very long time ago. Is that even? Same, I think we're like the same age. So like, yeah, that's Wait. craziness. Are you, Sorry, uh, continue. Didn't mean to go up. Wait, how old are you? I'm 24. Okay, I'm 25. Very close. Okay, very, yeah. close very, very close. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to make people happy. And then when I came out, I was like, basically same idea as you. I wanted to, you know, I wanted people to know that it's okay to be trans and it's okay to, to, to just exist and be a person. Like, it's totally cool. I gave tips and all that stuff. And now I do commentary on stupid stuff just to show people that it's, it's, they're not worth it, honestly. I mean, I do, we make videos about them, but they're, we show how ridiculous. Face. Yeah, for a yeah. laugh. Like, it's weird that they go online to spew all the shit. <clears throat> right, like, y'all don't have hobbies? You don't have, like, friends? They're so obsessed with us. It's weird. I know, like, why are you so obsessed with me? <laughs> we're just so, like, we're we understand. so cool. It's yeah. easy to be obsessed with us. But, like... <laughs> exactly. This has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> It's just your favorite show and your favorite movie. I would like to. Ooh, know. Okay, okay, okay. Um, this is such a difficult question. This is probably the hardest question that you've already or that you've asked so far. Um, <laughs> like just like the show aspect. There's just so many different. I know. Genres. You know what I mean. Yep. Um, but if I'm watching shows just to like casually watch a show, or whatever, it would probably be like a Schitt's Creek, The Office moment, something like that. Just like light watching. Um, but if I'm like sitting down, like watching a show. I like like Criminal Minds or I was really into like Good Girls. Did you watch Good Girls? No, I people have talked about that. It's so good. You need to watch it. I got to watch it. Promo for good Girls out here, but it's so good. <laughs> Sponsor. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right, literally. Like no, please no. though. <laughs> please. Um but for yes. video not for videos, for movies, I like like very like classic movies. So right now my favorite would be like Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, like the original one, you know? Okay. Or like um the wizard of oz or something just like movies that you know just bring you back cute movies like that i love yeah i love those movies for me right. same i love the office watch Shit's creek yeah. too very good show they're both really great right. yeah and i also love bob's burgers i think they're a great animated show that doesn't have to rely on like bad jokes to like get by <clears throat> right so no i agree 100 percent. yeah super i love that show and for movies this one <laughs> okay i've got two so i love shrek i love all the shrek as you movies. should they're the mm -hmm. best right they really are 
so good. But I feel like Shrek movies are some of the only movies that like don't get dramatically worse after the first one too. Like they were only four or five and they were still good. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were still actually good. So and I just I don't know why I love Shrek. It's just it's a cute little story. You don't gotta funny. explain. Yeah, it's right. <laughs> it's funny. For my second one, this is gonna definitely get me made fun of. I really love the movie Wolf of Wall Street. I thought it was a very good movie. Hmm. Understandable it, how people are gonna make fun of you for that one. Yeah. It's okay. I don't make fun of you. Leonardo DiCaprio I, is he's so good. He's just a very good actor. Generally. Yeah. I actually haven't even seen that movie, so I cannot talk, but really it's it's like a fucked up story, but it's it's a re- it's good it's like sad but it's like good and he yeah. does a really I know, like, really great job reference it a lot and stuff like that but yeah. i don't know i'll have to watch it I'll add it to my list <laughs> my, my nail you'll be like uh, your nail came up <laughs> yeah I'm gonna watch this one. <laughs> yeah, now i'm not a classic woman i wish Shapiro would uh, fucking this. you're not a classic i can't have you on here if you're not gonna be a classic woman i understand i understand so, call up happy okay i will <laughs> <laughs> no, please don't <laughs> like for your own like health and well-being that's a terrible idea like don't even look at her content um someone asked how do you deal with transphobia around you um like from like family members you think or yeah i would assume so or like uh friends or something i mean if your friend is being transphobic they're not a good friend you know? <laughs> like just fully drop them yeah, like block see you never yeah um but like with family and stuff like obviously that is much harder especially if you are like a minor or something and you can't physically get away from them I honestly I have no idea what would you what would you do in that in that situation I mean I guess the best advice that I would give is to make like a close family with friends or something like that with people that do support you um so that you don't only have those negative people around you. You need to like at least balance it out if that's the best you can do. But yeah, once you get older, like I feel like if you're on your own, you're independent, you don't need to deal with that. Like it's separate yourself from that. You know what I mean? Like you don't need anybody in your life that's going to just bring you down and validate who you are and just make you feel bad about yourself. That was good. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Uh, my initial, <laughs> I had a joke. Um, I'm not going to say the joke. We love a joke. It's <laughs> just, just beat them up. But okay, yeah, uh, yeah, you can do that. Fully swing. Yeah. It depends on the situation. Like if you, if you, I, it's stupid to put up with transphobia. Like it's, it's not worth it, obviously, but sometimes people are stuck in a situation where they're, they are literally like, if you're. 15 or whatever you live with your parents even if you're 20 you live with your parents and they're saying all this bullshit you can't escape it um i mean i would just surround yourself like you said with positive people uh, the most you can do if you're stuck in a situation like that so um people if they're not willing to change their minds it's just ignorance and you can only do so much about it try to educate them and it doesn't work like you've done what right i feel like when people yeah when people are so stuck in their ways like that it's just it's not worth the energy yeah so i get you i guess we can end it here i'm so tired and i need to order food immediately i know same i need to go make something i don't even know maybe take another five shots after watching her yeah i will i that's actually i didn't want to tell you but that's what i'm gonna do (laughs) you're like you gotta go back (laughs) i gotta i gotta jill really i don't know jill did something to me (laughs) she did a number on us she did a number yeah hey thank you uh for being on here samantha i really appreciate it of course thank you for um, having me my first ever podcast really? my first ever collab and podcast yeah really oh that's mm-hmm. a shame no i'm just kidding <laughs> no 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 no. i'm I, very grateful that i was here so thank you very much of course and i think uh, a lot of people will know who you are but it, if you want to like say what you do on youtube Oh, yeah. I mean, I do content that's pretty similar to your content. You know, I I try to take it from the trans woman perspective, obviously. But um, my name is Samantha Lux. You can find me on YouTube, Samantha Lux. Instagram, Twitter, I think it's underscore Samantha Lux. But yeah, I post videos at least once a week. I try to do twice a week, but you know, it's fine. (laughs) Shit is hard. This life be, you know, I don't know. Jill got me, got me tired, I guess. Yeah, we're, we're both very tired. So um, it actually is.
So, uh, hey, thanks everybody for listening. Again, thank you, Samantha, for being on here. And I will see all you guys next week with a new episode. Bye. Bye, everyone.